Hi, we are now at chapter 8 or mitosis. So mitosis is cell division and that's basically what we're looking at how a cell will copy itself and divide. And there are many different ways that it can happen and it depends on the species. So the first one we're looking at is called asexual reproduction. In other words, one species is involved and no partner. So you can see there's an amoeba. Uh, when it splits in half, you've got two amoebas. Sea stars, starfish, um, when you cut off an arm or a leg, it regenerates an entire new body. And African violets also do not need to have male partners or female partners. This is what happens during asexual reproduction. It's called binary fission. So just watch how you have the one cell, the nucleus, which is in the center, and the nucleus splits apart. It's actually not a an membrane enclosed nucleus. They've just indicated where the DNA is housed. If you remember, prokaryotes do not have a membrane enclosed nucleus. But that is binary fission. By it's asexual reproduction. Now here is an onion cell, which is a plant. And this picture actually looks pretty much like what you're going to be seeing in lab if we haven't already done this lab. And the, they dye the onion so that you can see the chromosomes. The chromosomes are the dark coiled, almost like worms that you're seeing there. And that cell right in the middle is in a certain phase of mitosis where it's going to split into two daughter cells. Now, why do we need mitosis? There's many reasons for it. Uh, there's damaged cells. Say you get a cut, uh, you got to replace those cells. Growth, once uh, a sperm and egg unite and you have a fertilized egg, it immediately starts off with mitosis because at the end of nine months, you have a trillion celled baby. So from one cell, each cell starts dividing and it is going through mitosis. So how do we make sure that the cells are the same as the parent? That often causes problems. Now cancer is an issue of mitosis gone wrong. Some birth defects are due to mitosis gone wrong. So there are many different things that can go wrong. It's a very specific process that follows a very specific timeline depending on the cell. And if it's off the timeline at all, you won't have mitosis occur correctly. Now, we will have quite a large vocabulary and one of the best things that I can recommend is that you use the flashcards that I have on Quizlet as well as review the tests and quizzes that I have in Blackboard. As you go through the words, try to come up with some kind of mnemonic or something to help you study the terms. So cell division is mitosis, reproduction. Uh, chromosomes, those are in the nucleus and they are made up of DNA and it's that which we determines what the genetic characteristics of the offspring will be. Chromatid. We will look at a picture of this in this lecture. It is actually just one strand of DNA. DNA duplicates itself and you have two strands of it and once they attach to each other they're made up of they're called individual chromatids 
together they are called sister chromatids. Daughter cells are the babies and cytokinesis is the splitting of the cytoplasm so that once you have a cell that's ready to complete mitosis it splits apart from the parent cell. This picture is one that's like in your book and then I have another one coming up that uh, I also like but it, it has the same information. It, the dark blue at the bottom is the mitotic phase which is the division phase of a cell. What we're looking at here is the life cycle of a cell from the time it's born to the time it gets ready to divide to the time that it does divide. Now s not every cell goes through this cycle so if you look at the bottom of the screen uh, actually this slide doesn't have it sorry it's on the next slide so we'll come t back to that in a minute. I want to start at cytokinesis. At cytokinesis you have that double arrow split where you've created two daughter cells. That is the beginning of the life of a cell. So we're starting there with the cycle and you'll see G1 on the left side. This first phase is called the growth one phase. This is when this new cell which is small to begin with, matures and get, does its job, whatever the cell is, it, they all have jobs to perform. And the G1 phase is the beginning of the cell's life. Then we get to the S phase, which is at the top of the screen. And that is actually when the DNA or the chromosomes duplicate. It is at that point in time that duplication occurs, but you still cannot see the chromosomes underneath the microscope as they have not condensed and coiled up so that they become visible. After duplication, there's another growth phase. And this is when the organelles and everything are getting ready for mitosis to occur. The cell has to be large enough so when it divides, it can divvy up the material inside the cell. Okay, so that's 90% of the cycle of a cell, and that's called interphase. And you'll see that indicated in the middle of the circle. So interphase is from the mo after cytokinesis to the end of G2. The other 10% of the cycle of the cell is the mitotic phase, which is the dark blue. And that is what we're going to be looking at, is mitosis. Now this phase, this chart shows one that I wanted to point out. You can see M for the mitotic phase. G1 is the first growth phase. But look at that little one that sticks out, the GO. Those are cells that never divide. They are cells that s are stuck in the G1 phase for their entire life. And th an example would be a neuron or nerve cell. They do not divide. That is why when there is damage to the spinal cord or the central nervous system, it cannot repair itself. Now the entire outer blue indicates interphase. I don't think I mentioned before, the after G1, the phase is called synthesis, the S phase. That is when the duplication occurs. G2 is continued growth, and M is mitosis. This soccer player's knee will be as good as new in a few weeks, thanks to mitosis, a type of cell division that generates new cells for growth and repair. Let's move into a cell to witness the events of mitosis. 
Before a cell can divide, it must first duplicate the chromosomes stored in its nucleus. During chromosome duplication, several bubbles open up along the chromosome. Each bubble grows until it merges with an adjacent bubble. Each chromosome now consists of two identical copies called sister chromatids. Getting closer, we see that each sister chromatid consists of DNA wound around small proteins called histones. The sister chromatids begin to coil into tight helical fibers. Outside the nucleus, centrosomes that duplicated earlier move away from each other to opposite sides of the cell. Microtubules extend from the centrosomes, forming the mitotic spindle. Back in the nucleus, the DNA forms loops, becoming more compacted. These structures fold back on themselves, eventually condensing into a shorter and thicker chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. As the chromosomes continue to condense, the nuclear envelope breaks up. The array of spindle microtubules is now extensive, and the chromosomes are fully condensed. Spindle fibers from each pole attach to protein structures located at the centromere of each sister chromatid. As the chromosomes are bound by spindle fibers from opposite poles, they move first one way and then another. The counteracting forces of the spindle eventually cause all the chromosomes to end up at the center of the cell, as if arranged on an imaginary plate. The sister chromatids are released from each other, each becoming a full-fledged chromosome. They are moved toward opposite poles of the cell, pulled along the spindle fibers attached to them. At the same time, Overlapping spindle fibers that are not attached to chromosomes continue to lengthen, pushing the poles farther apart. Once the chromosomes arrive at their destination, they become less condensed. Two new nuclear envelopes form, completing mitosis, the division of one nucleus into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. The cytoplasm divides by the process of cytokinesis, forming two separate daughter cells. In your body, millions of cells divide every second, providing new cells for growth and for repair of damaged cells. Now, in this slide, I have put the picture of the sister chromatids, as I had indicated earlier. At the top is a chromosome that's not duplicated. And that's how they exist inside your cell until they go through a synthesis phase. Once they duplicate, you have two identical chromatids. You can see the one on the top and the one on the bottom. That is a duplicated chromosome. Each chromatid is identical to the other, and they're called sister chromatids. So here we're going to go through the phases, and I'm going to try to do this pretty quick because it gets repeated over and over, and um, I'll try to add a few things in here that might help you memorize. You'll see I have highlighted in red, interesting and interphase. This is the 90% part of the life cycle of a cell. And this is when the cell is growing, maturing, and duplicates the, the DNA so that it eventually is ready for mitosis. Now, the word chromatin, that is what DNA looks like during this phase, or is. Uh, it's sort of like spaghetti. They're thin strands, not visible underneath a microscope. They are not condensed or put close together as you saw in that little video. So that it is called chromatin at that point in time. And here's a nice picture of interphase. It's a cell that is maturing. 
So the picture on the left is interface. You can see the centrial pairs that are going to split apart and go to opposite ends of the cell. The nuclear envelope is in place and the plasma membrane. Now during prophase, that is the first phase of mitosis and that is when the centrosomes go to opposite ends of the cell so that they can start to form the microtubules, the spindle network, in order to separate the chromosomes. During prophase, the chromosomes are condensing and getting very, very thick, and that is when you can start to see them underneath a microscope. there is a picture of prophase. It, it makes the centrosomes very visible um, and when you look under the scope you won't see it looking this nice. This is a, uh, a very nice picture. Okay, so prophase are the first phase. The other three phases are metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, which overlaps with cytokinesis. Metaphase is when the chromosomes line up at the equator. Anaphase is when they are being pulled apart to opposite ends of the poles. And then telophase is when you're starting to see the nuclear envelope form and a cleavage furrow which is pulling in the central area of this cell. Okay, metaphase, M, meet in the middle. See if that helps you remember that. Homologous chromosomes I'm not sure we've discussed them, but those are the paired chromosomes. You get a chromosome number one from your mom and a chromosome number one from your dad. Each of those chromosomes have the same genes on them. They code for the same traits. Those are homologous chromosomes. And during mitosis, they do not associate together. Whereas during meiosis, which we'll talk about a, only a little bit, they do associate together. And here is a picture of metaphase. Anaphase. There you go. You can see they're being pulled apart. And telophase is the final phase. We need to make the two cells into one. And everything that occurred is now going back to the way it was. So you have two new cells. And here's telophage. The blue are the chromosomes, the green are the fibers in between. And you can see cytokinesis, the pulling in of the outer part of the cell so that they're going to split into two. Here you can see the contractile ring. It is actually made up of fibers, uh, part of the cytoskeleton where they pull in. The cytoskeleton does flagella and cilia. It allows for movement. Well, in this case, it's pulling in the uh, fibers to create two cells. Here you can see it again. It's also called a cleavage furrow. And eventually you're going to see 
two daughter cells. Now here, I put this here all together. And IPMAT. IPMAT. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. If you make some kind of mnemonic up, something that um, a lot of times I'll say PMAT, poor men are testy. Or you could do any other thing that will help you remember the sequence because you have to know the sequence. It's on the test. Um, tell you right now. So the picture is showing all of the events of mitosis that we just went through so that you can see the two diploid cells, which means that there's two copies of every chromosome. So here are IPMAT. Try to come up with something to remember that. Now, a plant is a little different. What we've been looking at is an animal cell. Now, a plant, when it goes through cytokinesis, it has to form a new cell wall. So here you're looking at a plant with the intelophase, and the little blue dots in the middle are fat vesicles that are being laid down to start to create the new cell wall. Here you can see they're growing and fusing, and the nucleus is forming, and the cell plate is growing, and now you have a new primary cell wall and two daughter cells. Okay, the top picture is the animal cell, or the plant cell that you will be looking at underneath the microscope, and you can see in the top that it hasn't finished telophase because the cell plate hasn't completed forming. Once it's totally formed, then you have two daughter cells. But that would indicate that the cell is still in telophase. 2n equals the diploid number. What that means is that you have two copies of every chromosome in your cell. You got one copy from your mom, one copy from your dad, and it produces 23 chromosomes from each parent for a total of 46, 23 pairs. So that's what the diploid number is referring to. It is a cell that has two copies of every chromosome. Now there's another term called meiosis. Mitosis is what we've just gone over. It's a division of any body cell. Somatic is the same as body. Uh, it's a definition. Meiosis, though, is different. It is a cell division, but it's only of the gametes, or the sex cells. So meiosis makes the sperm and the egg. The sperm and egg only have half the chromosome set. They have one copy of every chromosome. So there's 23 chromosomes in a gamete. Once the sperm and egg unite, we now have 46. So meiosis is used for sexual reproduction. It reduces the cell to half the number of chromosomes because it's critical that at fertilization, you now have a sperm with 23 chromosomes, an egg with 23 chromosomes, and they unite to have 46, which is what you need as a human. That's the 2n number, or the diploid number. So the sperm and egg each have half of the chromosome set. 
and that's also called the haploid number. All species that have sexual reproduction go through this process. If there is no sexual reproduction, as in plants, some plants, then it doesn't, uh, that doesn't happen. So a baby needs 46 chromosomes when the sperm and egg unite. So you have 23 from the sperm, 23 from the egg. The 23 chromosomes are called the haploid number. You put 23 plus 23 to give us, humans, the homo sapiens species, 46 chromosomes. and you get chromosomes from your mom and your dad and they can get you have chromosome number one from your mom chromosome number one from your dad those are called homologous chromosomes they are the chromosomes that are paired together because they have the same genes on them chromosome two and chromosome two chromosome 3 and chromosome 3 all the way up to 44 then the last two chromosomes are the sex chromosomes all the others are the autosomes or the s cells of the body So here is a picture, and I think this is a really nice picture. It shows a pair of homologous chromosomes. We'll say it's chromosome 1. And on chromosome 1, you have the same genes from each parent. A gene is indicated by a letter. And usually when you see capital letters, they're considered a dominant trait. It's a trait that will display itself. The lowercase letter is considered a recessive trait or something that does not display itself unless you have two copies of the same chromosomes or same genes. So in this case, you can see that the chromosomes are lined up sort of like a map on the chromosomes. The same genes are in the same locations but you may have different traits being passed on with the genes for example uppercase a could be brown eyes lowercase a could be blue eyes so that would mean that the blue eyes is recessive and that the child would have two copies of the same gene, which is the letter A, but the dominant trait displays itself. We'll be looking at more at this in the next chapter. This final picture shows meiosis compared to mitosis. You need to know every step of mitosis. Meiosis, you need to understand that it creates the sex cells and that they have half the chromosomes of any other cell in the body. In order for meiosis to create the haploid cells, it goes through one more division than mitosis. Mitosis does one division and you have an identical copy of the parent cell. Whereas in meiosis, it has to go through two divisions and they are not identical to the parent cell, nor are they identical to each other. And here the color of the chromosome indicates which chromosome went where. If you look at the meiosis side, you have a dark blue and a red, and then a, a darker red and a purple. And see how they, they split in half, 
because you only get half the set and you can see that there's two different types of daughter cells that were created.